real quick and announce that <laughs> the stream is up. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. Have my echo, Grant. Okay. Yay. Ali, are you posting on Discord now? Tell me when that's up. Welcome. Coroutines. Cool things in Unity. Um, just as a small preference, you'll start, sort of notice that the stuff we'll be talking about are more like cool tools that you probably should use while making games. Because they'll just simplify your life. Uh, yeah, they'll, they'll make your life easier while developing your scripts and stuff like that. Not all games necessarily use these, but they are very useful to know about. Because as you go forward, it's more about like knowing the cool tools and being able to use them when it makes sense. Uh, the announcement up. Okay. So coroutines. They're a way to just control the timing of how a function is executed. So like, for example, you could execute like the top half, wait five seconds, and then continue the rest of it. And so it's literally just all about timing and controlling that timing outside of the update loop, or outside the update function, I should say. So, for example, imagine this timeline's update with, you know, the vertical ticks being like when update is called. So you'll notice it's slightly irregular because the update depends on your frame rate. So sometimes a frame goes faster, sometimes it's slower. But, you know, this is more or less what an update would look like if put on a timeline. So now what a coroutine can let you do is do something like make the update a little bit more spread out. Like, I only want this updating every, like, five seconds. So then you don't have to check every time in the update loop. You just have this coroutine that's like, oh, my five seconds are up. Let me go again. Also, what coroutines will let you do is have things that aren't always executing. You can choose to start it and then stop it midway, you know, midway, and then start it again whenever you want. So, again, this goes back to you don't have to check an update it's just sort of managed by itself. That makes sense so far? So now let's talk about actually the key components of making coroutines. So the coroutine itself is just a regular function that returns I enumerator. So, for, so as you see with this do stuff example, it's just it returns I enumerator, and then you can do whatever you can in a normal function and like in whatever context it was before. Um, to actually kick off the coroutine, you actually have to call a special function that's tied to mono behaviors, like so that's tied to your script. And that thing is called start coroutine. And as you can see, all you do is start coroutine, call your coroutine function, and your coroutine's already working. It's already kicked off, it'll run as you will. And now there's a, you know, the flip side, there's start stop coroutine. This one is also tied to the mono behavior. So you can only like stop coroutines on this mono behavior. I can't call it from a different one. But um, stop coroutine is slightly more, you actually have to have a way to reference the coroutine you want to stop. The easiest way to do that is actually to store the return of start coroutine. And then that, that gives you a coroutine object, which is like just a reference to the coroutine that you can pass into stop coroutine. So that clear so far? It's just a function that you have special uses for. So now, I think, oh yes. So now, now you're probably asking, how do you actually control the timing of coroutines? Coroutines have special, they don't return, they don't just return, they have special, they have a special return. And those are yield break and yield return. So yield break is how I can stop the coroutine from within the coroutine. To say, so yield break is like, hey, I'm kind of done here, let me just stop my coroutine entirely and be done with, be over. So yield return is the more complicated one, and that's how you actually have timing. Yield return 
what you put as the yield return will determine when the coroutine will continue. So it, it does two things. First, it says, I'm going to stop here. Second, it says, how long am I going to wait to continue? So there's two main things to return, which is null, which automatically says, I'm going to wait to the next frame before I continue, which is the same as saying, oh. And the other one is you return a new wait for seconds, passing the number of seconds. And um, yeah, if you return a new wait for seconds zero, that's the same as saying wait for the next frame. But yeah, the wait for seconds is how you would be like, I only want to update every five seconds. So yeah, question so far? Because um, I'm about to go into the coding part. <coughs> There's nothing else, right? Yep, OK. So now I have the default project. I'm actually going to go to project, go go over here, and just make a new scene because I was not prepared. <laughs> Yay, where is scene? Uh, classroom. I'm just making a new scene, open it up, so I have a clean field to work with. So I'm just going to very quickly make the simplest 2D thing I can. I'm going to right click in the hierarchy, make a 2D sprite, and then over in the dot, I'm going to just pick my favorite shape, which is this random ass circle. So now I just have a basic sprite, and I'm actually going to scale it up because it's really hard to see. Okay, now I have this really big circle. And because I, you know, we're working with scripts, I'm going to go to add component. I'm going to make, um, I'm going to call this co-routine test. And then make a new script, create an ad. So now as Unity thinks about it, it's going to make it's making a new script called coroutine test and just attaching it onto this game object. And we're just going to open this up. Okay. So let's actually write our first coroutine. And we're going to do something simple, which is just make it move to the right. So as I said before, it just returns I enumerator, and then you give it a name just as you would with any function. I'm just going to call this move. It's not going to take any arguments and close, you know, just have a body. So now, something that you'll probably do a lot is the probably something that your beginner, your intro CS classes told you never to do. And we put a while true here. Don't do this. Don't do this normally. This only works in this case because you can control it from outside. So now why you, why you put this while true is because I want this move to always execute. Because you know how I said it can take a break and then continue later? When it comes back, I want to loop back and repeat the same action. And hence why I have a while true here. In any other case, this is probably very dangerous and would, you know, make your program stall forever. But because this allows you to um, say, I'm going to stop moving for a while, this is actually okay. So now to move forward, we ju we're just going to do transform dot, um, it's position. And we're just going to add vector three dot right. So now that'll move right. But we have to, you know, say I'm going to pause for a while. So we're going to yield return null. So what this coroutine will do is say, okay, I'm going to add one to to I'm going to move the I'm going to move the game object to the right one and then wait for the next frame. 
And then, as as you all use, are used to, you know, it it reaches the bottom of the wild. It's like, oh, I need to check the wild condition, and then go and then repeats this process over and over. So now let's actually have the code use it, because while this is, I'm pretty sure compiling code. Let's check real quick. Okay, let's actually start this with start coroutine. So just call start coroutine. Oh, and actually, let me zoom in. Got to do that. And then we just call move. So what this, so yeah, this just sets up to have this coroutine tied to this model behavior. So this model behavior now has you know, ownership of this coroutine and like runs it when the update goes. So now if I go to Unity and let Unity think about it for a bit, if you hit play, you'll notice it'll start automatically moving to the right. Very quickly, I, I might add. It just sort of left the, left the room. So, oh yeah, side note, this is also not how you should do movement. I'm just doing a very quick example because it's so much easier. <laughs> so now that was very quick and, you know, happened every frame. What happens if we want to stall it for, for a while? So now let's do the wait for seconds. So what we return is a new wait for seconds followed by the time we want to wait. And just to make it a little bit more usable in the editor, I'm actually going to add a field up here, public float um, wait time. And I'm going to set it default to five seconds. And I'm going to use that wait time here. Just highlighting these for your convenience. And yeah, what this will say is instead of waiting for the next frame to continue this loop, I'll wait five seconds and then move, move a little bit again. So now if we go back to Unity after I save. Ba -da -ba -ba. You're going to notice that it now moves a little bit. It waits. It's going to wait its five seconds. And then, you know, it just snapped over because now we have that pause, that large pause between it. You know, let's just watch it inch across the screen. No, that's too slow. Anyways, so now you kind of get how I can control just when it updates, right? This is just use wait for seconds and you can choose when to update it next. So now let's actually do something a little bit cooler. Let's actually nest these coroutines. So what you can actually do with coroutines is from within a coroutine, instead of yield returning a wait for seconds or null, you can yield return the call to a different coroutine. And what that says is, is I'm going to let this other coroutine go, and then I'll continue after that coroutine says they're done. So I'm just going to make a new coroutine, I enumerator up, because I'll make this one move up. And this time I'll make it just move up five times. So I'm going to make the standard for loop, for loop int i equals zero, i is less than five, plus plus i, that's the wrong i. And I'm just going to dot position plus equals vector three dot up. And I'm going to use the same wait time I used before. I'm going to yield or yield return a new wait for seconds wait time. So another thing, important thing to note, you know how I said there is yield break to man to very explicitly say I'm going to stop. Let me actually highlight this for you. Um, another that yield break is sort of automatically applied if you reach the end of the function. So in this case, even though I don't have yield break, it's sort of 
invisible is it's sort of added to the end of it automatically. And just to prove that this works, let's actually change this start coroutine to use up. And then go to Unity and watch it move up five times. The most invigorating, you know, thing in your game. In fact, I'm going to reduce this time to like once. I'm going to reduce this time to two seconds for the sake of demonstration. So you notice it moves up. That's twice, three times. Oh, I think it already did all five times because it's not moving anymore. So as you can see, the coroutine just automatically ended. Didn't have to manually put yield break or anything. So now let's do, let's actually nest those coroutines. So I'm going to change this back to move. And after this yield return, I'm, act, I'm going to yield return a call to up. So now what this says to do is move right, wait X amount of time, and then do whatever wait, and then wait, yeah, and then let up run, and then when up, and then when up finishes, just continue back at the start of the loop. Make sense so far? So yeah, I highlight these for your convenience. Okay. So, we act, so if we move back to Unity, I'm going to reduce this wait time to two seconds now because it takes too long, and then hit play. So now if we go over here, we can watch it slowly do the wrong thing. Did I not change something? No, that's right. Oh no, it's right. So now you notice it moves up five times and then moves right once. And it'll just keep on doing that forever. So now you're probably asking, well, why, the, why would this coroutine be so useful? So like we probably did, like we said in the event description, imagine you had a day-night cycle that explicitly needed to wait like an hour maybe, maybe less, and then swap to dip, swap to night, and then do something on night. So the coroutine is a nice way of doing that, of being like, okay, wait the hour, do the do the transition stuff, and then you know wait for another hour to transition back. And off it went into the oblivion. So now that's just examples of automatic you know, coroutines, stuff that you just have started and then let it go forever. Let's actually have some manual control over it. So what I'm going to do is actually add a button to, or make it so that we can stop it on a button press and then start it again on a button press. So we're going to have to add a new field, private coroutine. And I'm just going to call it move routine. So now, instead of just throwing away the return of start coroutine, I'm going to store it in move routine. And then in update, I'm just going to add, you know, small input checking if input dot get key down, is it? What? Well, key code dot space. I can't spell today. And then, so if I press space, I'm going to have it. Let's see. What, how should I do this? I should toggle this. So, what I'm going to do is if move routine is not null. I'm going to assume that I have it running right now. So if it's not null, I'm going to stop it. 
So I call stop coroutine and pass it move routine, the exact coroutine I want to stop. Otherwise, oh, and I'm going to null it out so I can tell my future self that um, the coroutine no longer exists. Oh, and something else to note is when a coroutine finishes, it does not, any, ver any references you have to it will not automatically be nulled out. You will have to manually null it out if you do want to do this kind of checking of whether or not the coroutine is running. And so on the flip side, I'm assuming the coroutine doesn't, is not running already. So I'm gonna store. I'm gonna start coroutine again. Start the coroutine again. Oh no, Sublime. Oh well, Sublime decided to be courteous this time. So yeah, just gonna highlight the chain. Oh god, what happened to my scroll wheel? Uh. Okay, interesting. I can't scroll. Just gonna highlight the changes I made real quick. Yeah, this is, you know, pretty straightforward. Just store the reference and then we can use it later as we wish. So now I'm gonna pop back into Unity and let's actually Okay, so we can assume it's Okay, for the sake of demonstration, I'm actually going to reduce this wait time to 0.5 because seconds are actually very long. So now you'll notice it's moving. If I oops, if I hit space, it'll have it stopped moving. If I hit space again, it's inching forward as if nothing happened. And so this model of using coroutines is useful for stuff like AI. Because you can imagine you can do you can bundle the all the behavior in just one coroutine and then start and stop it when you want that behavior not to go. So you can imagine like there's a move there's a movement and then you can have that on one coroutine. And then what if shooting you want it to stop. So then you could stop the movement and then start the shooting coroutine of like aiming and like trying to hunt down the player. Because you kind of don't... Yeah, I'm just going to stop it. Um, so, any questions, really? Because this is a shorter one. No questions? Y'all think you can use coroutines now? Um, oh, well... Mm. Some other no notable yield returns is you can actually have the coroutine wait for the end of the frame if you ever want that to control that other things run before you. Um, there's actually this ho a whole host of other things you can yield return, and you can find those on the Unity docs. I will not describe them all because there's like five of them for all the little neat tricks that you feel like you need to do. Um... Yeah, and just to connect back to last week with the events, y'all can probably imagine actually starting and stopping the coroutines on events. So like, right now I'm making a stealth game, and I have like a vision cone, and I want to actually stop movement when, when the vision cone sees something. So my vision cone has an on-detect event, and in that event I just load in the stop co the stop movement coroutine. And so I can hook up, you know, these on and off behavior in the editor while still using the events. And and then if I choose to change how the vision cone works, it's still, you know, on I can just change it in editor, never have to touch it again, never have to open the code. But yeah, I'm sort of done. <laughs> I'm going to stop the recording now.